Guys, hello everyone. This is Enchanted Life Path TV. Quick uploads this time, just a quick one. And what it is is I've put a load more information on this article. Um, most notably around talking about the virus and um, the bills that have been passed in the UK. There's also a very similar one coming over in the States as well. Bearing in mind, very similar to this. But there's something that I've noticed about this bill within the first exchanges of the bill. Okay, here, I'm going to just explain now. The coronavirus bill has now emerged and it not only throws up proof of medical tyranny in the UK, but it also shows us how wording is very particular in law. A play on words can twist things into many new outcomes. It can. Language is very particular in law. Next, does this bill say what I think it says? Read it, then let me continue to explain. So it says, a bill to make provision in connection with coronavirus for connected purposes. Right, coming down. Now this is the coronavirus bill, okay? Meaning of coronavirus and related terminology. In this act, coronavirus means severe acute respiratory syndrome. Coronavirus 2, SARS-CoV-2, okay? Coronavirus disease means... COVID-19, the official designation of the disease which can be caused by a coronavirus. So a coronavirus is an umbrella word for a load of cold-like illnesses that the worst ones can turn into a SARS disease which is then a, a severe acute respiratory sickness. I think that's what it is, the last one. So then what we've got here, right, it says a reference in this act to infection or contamination, however, expressed is a reference to infection or contamination with coronavirus, okay? It does not say COVID, even though it clearly separates for you the difference between the words of coronavirus and COVID-19. It tells you there in number one. And then in number two, it says this whole act any time we refer to an infection or a contamination, it's about coronavirus, not COVID. So that means now it's about common colds, flu, mild pneumonias, things like that. But, okay, a reference in this act to persons infected by coronavirus, however expressed, does not, unless you're constantly intention appears includes persons who have been infected but are clear of coronavirus okay so infected people who are now clear are not classed as infected anymore but the most important thing here is and we cannot miss the the point here is this is not the COVID-19 bill this is the coronavirus bill this is the co common cold bill a little bit exaggerated there, but strictly speaking, that's what it is. Okay, so, as I've said, do you feel pretty shafted about this now? Right, it states in English, not legal talk, COVID-19 is a type of coronavirus which is correct. This is why we should not all be running around scared of coronavirus. Just let me make this right and bigger for you. Look at the air quality reading on the right as well. <clears throat> 85 still. In the back ends are moderate where I would be finding out warnings. These air quality readings then come with respiratory issues as they get into the different grades. I covered that in the last video that I uploaded today and the live stream. Go back and watch them, please. A lot of information considering people can be arrested for having colds or respiratory issues. And we have got bad air quality, which is directly linked, I, in my opinion, to respiratory issues not just my opinion according to the air quality index as well anyway let's not let me get sad like what i just thought it was best to make that point again um so right just let me see where it was this bill then says that when the article refers to the infected people it says coronavirus not COVID-19, which means throughout all of this bill, they are not even talking about COVID-19 directly, but instead of all coronaviruses, which can be colds or flus or pneumonia, 
does it not? This, in short, is why it is called the Coronavirus Bill and not the COVID-19 Bill. Do you feel like you have been shafted all over the country now? Hmm. Right. The next screenshot raises even more alarm bells as we find out how the UK government have actually downgraded COVID-19 so it is no longer classed as a high consequence infectious disease. The information is from the gov.gov website. One observer of my post from the medical industry added a possible explanation for this stating that it is so they can treat patients of COVID-19, not coronavirus, at any hospital instead of HCIZ hospital. But this does not explain why the Advisory Committee on Dangerous Pathogens also class COVID-19 as not as bad as first thought, with what is described as low mortality rates being a key factor in the decision. Um, this was announced on the government website on March the 19th, days before Boris Johnson placed the UK into a state of national emergency and put us all in lockdown. We can see here status of COVID-19.gov website, this does link through to the source. Any links to this article are also in the description below for anyone watching. As of 19th of March 2020, COVID-19 is no longer considered to be a high consequence infectious disease. The nation's four public health HCIZ group made an interim recommendation in January the 20th. Jan sorry, in January 2020 to classify COVID as a HCIZ. This was based on consideration of the UK HCID criteria about the virus and the disease with information available during the elderly stages, sorry, the early stages of the outbreak. But now and um, that is more is but now that more is known about COVID nineteen, the public health bodies in the UK have reviewed the most up to date information about COVID nineteen against the UK HCID criteria. They have determined that several features have now changed. In particular, more information is available about the mortality rates low overall, and there is now greater clinical awareness and a specific and sensitive laboratory test, the availability of which continues to increase. But look, it also makes out here, it makes the point, the Advisory Committee on Dangerous Pathogens is also of the opinion that COVID-19 should no longer be classified as a, as we see here, high consequence infectious disease. So why are we in lockdown? Okay, if you think that was too much internet for today, well I have another very odd publication that contradicts the information that we are being bombarded with on mainstream news. A study published by the National Center for Biotechnology Information states false positives on COVID-19 are around 83%. So there you go. Again, we link through to the source. Here we can see some key points which have highlighted. The positive predictive value of the active screening was only 19.67%. In contrast, the false positive rate of positive results was 80.33%. Um, the and then we see here 75% probability for the false positive rate of positive results was over 47%. The conclusion is in the close contact of COVID-19 patients, nearly half or even more of the asymptomatic infected individuals reported in the active nucleic acid test may be false positives. <laughs> so there you go, there's three little key points three that are new on this article now for you. Again, if you do want to come over and read it, the link is in the description below. This has been Enchanted Life Path TV. Thanks for watching and thanks for visiting people from Brisbane. Uh, speak soon.